we okay? Yep. Okay, great. So I'm really excited to be here today. Um, while I might not be able to teach you how to buy dog food or, um, I don't know, get you tied cleaning supplies, I will be able to walk you through how to master customer marketing from watching romantic comedies. So in the world of romantic comedies, we all know that one thing is true. Love conquers all. We watch our favorite actors, well, my favorite actors, stumble around searching for love, and shocker, it's usually right before the rolling credits when they find it. Well, in the world of customer marketing, the same is true. It's our job as customer marketers to build relationships with our customers at scale so that they fall in love with our product. In other words, we want them to do this. We want them to sing from the rooftops or sing from their laptops about how much they love us. And in turn, we can then drive greater advocacy, growth, and lifetime value of those customers. Now at Unbounce, I sit on a team right between customer centricity and evangelism. So advocacy really comes through our retention marketing campaigns. And this is a little bit of how our customer marketing funnel looks. But if you're anything like me, you didn't learn how to build amazing relationships with your customers from your boss or your college textbooks. Instead, you learn them from the writers, actors, and producers of romantic comedies, or as some might call them, the real love experts themselves. So today, I'm gonna to walk you through a specific case study, the annual plan migration campaign, and show you how we employed various lessons from watching romantic comedies in this campaign. A little bit of a background, kind of like Shopify Plus, this campaign came out of a change in pricing. So in March of 2017, Unbounce updated our pricing. We did this for a ton of different reasons, which I won't bore you with today, but ultimately it was to help create a more intuitive connection between what our customers were using our tool for and ultimately what they were paying. But the objective of our campaign is a little bit different. We weren't trying to move everybody over from old pricing to new pricing. Instead, it was our goal to move people from monthly pricing to new annual plans. And the reason for this is that after looking at all of our data when we were updating our pricing, we realized that only 2% of our entire customer base was paying us annually. That's not very good for a SaaS company. Uh, the other thing we noted is that those customers, that small subset of customers who were paying us annually had a way, way better value with our tool. So they were using it a lot more, they were adopting more higher level features, and ultimately, they were more deeply committed. So not only was there business value for us to move the dial up on the percentage of customers on annual plans, but there's also more of a value for our customers to make them more successful with our tool. The challenge is probably pretty obvious. When you're updating your pricing, you wanna make sure that you're creating value for your customers so that ultimately they see the benefit in why we changed. Because if you're anything like me, um, and if you pay subscriptions for any services right now, you can probably hazard a guess that some of the two scariest words for a SaaS customer are pricing change. So you really want to avoid like shocking your customers and inciting a really negative reaction. The stakes are really high when it comes to a pricing campaign, but luckily for us, that's where romantic comedies come in. So here I'm gonna to talk to you about three lessons today, and the first lesson that I'm gonna mention is intimacy. So this is a lesson I learned from watching the movie Love Actually, one of my favorite romantic comedies. Just by a show of hands, who here has seen this movie? Great, okay, awesome. So here is Sam, a little man in Love Actually, teaching us the lesson of intimacy. I have a plan. Thank the Lord, tell me. Well, girls love musicians, don't they? Uh -huh. Even the really weird ones get girlfriends. That's right. Meatloaf definitely got laid at least once, for God's sake. Ringo Starr married a Bond girl. Whatever. There's this big concert at the end of term, and Joanna's in it. And I thought maybe if I was in the band and played absolutely superbly, there's a chance that she might actually fall in love with me. What do you think? 
Okay, so here Sam realizes that in order to get the girl he loves, Joanna, to fall in love with him, the first thing he needs to do is get closer to her. So we thought, okay, well then how can we take this lesson in intimacy from Sam and make sure that we're creating that close connection with our customers? Well, as you might have probably guessed, in marketing that comes through segmentation. So through segmentation, what happens is that you're able to create that more one-to-one -one connection with your customers and then speak to them on a more individualized level. But uh, we have 14,000 paying customers at Unbound, so trying to create 14,000 specific offers for every single one of them is not something you can scale. So what really happens here is that you need to focus on your planning for segmentation. So at Unbounce, we work in a modified Google Sprint structure, and I've given an overview of this and a bunch of other talk takeaways at alexa.unbounce.com, which you can visit right now, or on your mobile phones, on your laptop, whatever. But it starts with this. It starts with a really heavy understanding phase where we dig into our data and our research. We analyze the problem. We then set our targets. We'll build a prototype of our campaign. And always, we test that with real customers. So we usability test with 3, 5, 15, 50 customers at a time, depending on the scale of our marketing campaign. We then take that real customer feedback, apply it to our campaign, tweak it, QA the crap out of it, which is really important to avoid broken links or like bad messaging, and then we launch. But from there, we often iterate again and make sure that we're constantly tweaking our campaign over time. So let's start. We looked at our data, and these were the segments that we were able to create as part of our campaign. So taking our 14,000 customers, we divided them into seven different groups, and we segmented them by their plan type, how much they were paying us per month, um, as well as the various features that they had adopted as part of their plan. So some customers on the same plan might be using one, features, one feature, whereas other customers on that plan weren't. So we wanted to make sure that we were creating a more streamlined and targeted message for those customers based on these cohorts. From there, we did research, and honestly, it was a little overwhelming. It looked a lot like titles like this, reading online, how to raise pricing without causing a customer meltdown. Like, great, a customer meltdown's possible? Oh my god, that's really scary. Or this example, and we saw many examples of SaaS companies who updated their pricing, and we saw feedback from customers going online with irate reactions, saying that they're their entire plan had been taken from them, now they have to pay twice as much, or that they feel they had been tricked, and then, oh my God, we're back here again. So basically, we remember that the stakes are really, really high, so it's super important to always be customer-centric. From there, we set our targets. So after doing our research, looking at our data, we decided that it was feasible for us as a company to move the dial on annual pricing from 2% to 10%. And just to give you an indication of what that equated for for our company, we were aiming for about a $450,000 lift in annual recurring revenue. So again, a very high business value to make sure we get this campaign right. And here's the outcome of all the segments we created. So again, we had seven cohorts of smiling customers. We created seven landing pages for each of those customer cohorts. But we didn't stop there. We also did five different iterations, because like I mentioned, we're always trying to tweak our campaigns over time. So in the end, we had 35 landing pages. As a side note, Unbounce is a landing page builder, so it's not very hard for us to just like pump out a lot of landing pages all at once. Our customers often make like tens of more of these than we do every day. Um, we also created seven custom plan overview tables. So here on these plan tables, we highlighted their plan that they were currently on, what they were paying against what we were offering them on the annual plan, as well as the features and benefits. So they had a really clear picture of why we were creating value for them and asking them to move. After that, our content matrix is growing. We created eight emails that was obviously personalized to every single segment, and we sent those to every single one. And then part of that campaign, we sent out two videos. So the first closer to the beginning of launch, and then the other at the end. Um, we also created 3,500 personalized image thumbnails. 
So that's what a personalized image thumbnail looks like here. For every single one of our videos, we added our customer's first name to the video thumbnail. And if Ezra is in the room, I saw that he also included a lot of like video image thumbnails in his email. This honestly was super effective and I highly recommend you try it as well as everyone else because we got a relative lift of 52% click-through rate because of this. So our click-through rate on our first test without a personalized image thumbnail had about 9%, whereas after using the personalized one, it had 14%. Um, you might have noticed that I said we only had 3,500. That's because, fun fact, we only had 3,500 unique first names. So out of 14,000 customers, only 3,500 of them had, the most, had a unique first name. So clearly our parents were really creative. So here's what our content matrix started to look like. But from there, we also personalized the email senders as part of every campaign, because some customers were used to hearing from Ollie or from myself, whereas, so we wanted to make sure that that message was really clear and consistent. We also personalized the features and benefits that we were offering them on new plans, and then extra offers, which I'll talk you through later today. So in the end, our content segmented matrix went from just being this, a massive content, to something that had a ton of small personalized touches that we were able to, to scale to create intimacy with our customers. So here's the very simple framework I walked you through today. Uh, you can definitely access that at alexa.unbounce.com as well. Which brings me to lesson two, woo, which is probably my favorite lesson of the day. So this lesson is really well explained in a recent romantic comedy called The Big Sick, one of my new favorites. Um, and it's here that Kumail, who is a stand-up comedian, demonstrates how to woo who ends up being his future wife, Emily, in this clip. Kumail inadvertently creates a connection with Emily there by calling her out on stage. So what he's doing is that he's building this connection with someone who he would never have met otherwise. <laughs> So we thought, okay, well, how can we take Kumail's advice and make sure we woo our customers? Well, well, we should do it in the way that he did, and that's through humor. So obviously, when you embed your campaigns with humor and you do your, do your best to be funny, and as a side note, I mean, it's not like a pricing campaign is something to really laugh about, so it's not necessarily uh, the easiest task. But when you do that, you end up building a deeper connection with your customers, and then ultimately your message after the fact becomes a lot more meaningful. So enter the chief discount officer. This was our attempt at infusing our campaign with humor, and I'm not gonna say a word about it, I'll let him introduce himself. Hello, I'm Kieran Cormack. I'm the CDO here at Unbounce. For those who don't know, that's Chief Discount Officer. Apparently, you didn't take advantage of this sweet deal I made specifically for you. Oh look, here's the email with your deal. Now you're not obligated to do anything right now. If you want to keep your old plan, that's great. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. I did make this deal specifically for you, our favorite customer. And the good news is, you have until Friday, May 12th, to claim this deal. But the clock is a ticking. Here's a little refresher on what I put together for you. Get 500,000 unique visitors on your plan, unlimited users, and unlimited domains. That's just amazing. Really nailed it here with this deal. So click the link below, change your plan, claim your discount. So, you claim that deal yet? Okay, let's give it up for Kieran. <laughs> so, Kieran is actually a real person, um, but he's a web developer at Unbounce, but also apparently is an amazing actor. And he really brought this character to life. But part of the campaign was the video, but obviously we wanted to make sure that the story carried through. So we built Kieran a fake uh, LinkedIn page that he's obsessed with and monitors regularly. So you can, you can look online right now and request to connect with him. He'll love that. We also added like juicy nuggets of wisdom from Kieran, the chief discount officer, on why you should take us up on, your off on our offer to move to annual pricing. And we dropped these on Twitter for our customers to enjoy. 
We then mailed every single one of our customers a postcard that Kieran, uh, from Kieran himself, and we designed in like a coffee stain on the postcard to make it look like he had just whipped them up on his busy day discounting customers. So ultimately, what Humor helped us do was go beyond just a massive content of segmented content to build a connection with our customers by making them smile. So, and it really did work. Ultimately, we heard tons of feedback from our customers saying that they actually were blown away by the level of detail we had put into this campaign. And Kieran was a really big part of that. So here's a framework that I just walked you through now. And again, you can access that at alexa.unbounce.com. Okay, this brings me to lesson three, trust. So this is a really important lesson. We've already tried to create more int intimacy with our customers, then we're kind of building that bridge to get closer to them. Well, now we need to make sure they really trust what we have to say. And I learned this lesson from my personal favorite romantic comedy, and that's Bridget Jones' Diary. So here's Bridget demonstrating trust. That was so nice and romantic. Basically, Bridget here, I'm not sure if you caught it at the beginning of the clip, but she acknowledges that Darcy, the one she's talking to, had actually previously told her that he really liked her. He also insulted her along the way. It seems to be a theme in their relationship, which is something I would not advise you do with your customers. Maybe you should growl at them or something like Ezra suggested. I don't know. But ultimately, what she does is she makes herself vulnerable and decides to reciprocate how she feels about Mr. Darcy after hearing it himself from him. So we thought, well, how can we make sure our customers really trust what we're saying and that we have done a good job here to make sure we're creating value for them? Well, as I mentioned, it's through reciprocity. So Bridget put, makes herself vulnerable, wants to make Mr. Darcy feel special after he already did the first it took the first leap and told her how much he liked her. So we wanted to make sure we told our customers we like them. And what happens with reciprocity is that you do end up making your customers feel extra special. And then in the turn, they end up responding a lot more favorably to your offer. So we just gave stuff away. We gave away 20 tickets to call to action conference, 100 deluxe swag packs, as well as 10 conversion sessions with our very own Michael Agard. Um, so customers got to sit down one-on-one -on -one with Agard and work on their pages or work on their pop-ups with Unbounce. In total, the value of what we just freely gave our customers was about $30,000. But beyond that, we used reciprocity in another way. We wanted to make sure that our marketing was really interesting and exciting for our customers and something they would enjoy, show them that they're special. So we added small Easter eggs. And one of the examples of that is on this plan overview table. So a really small, easy thing to do was that in our plan overview table, we added a tool tip. And so zooming in, you can see that on their previous plan, they had unlimited published pages. So they could create as many and publish as many as they wanted. But on their new plan, they could only publish up to 75. But we'd obviously done our research, and we weren't telling customers to move to plans where they would be having to unpublish their pages. So we made sure to highlight with the tooltip that we'd done our research, and we know that you are, haven't even come close to the limit of 75, and it's actually more than enough. As a side note, according to our hot jar heat maps, this was the hottest section on every single one of our pages, so it was really effective. From there, we embedded a pop-up on our landing pages. And if you didn't know, Unbounce is also a pop-ups builder, so this was very simple for us to get up. Um, we sent an email to customers, and in the email, we gave customers a clue as to what they needed to do on the landing page. And they clicked on this embedded pop-up and typed in the letter CDO, and then from there, all of these little annotations from the CDO himself showed up, and they animated as they were scrolling down the page. Now this offers like absolutely no real value to customers beyond waking them up, making it exciting, and something a little bit more fun for them to play around with. And then we also did, to make them feel special and reciprocate, based on a ton of feedback, a deal extension. So obviously when you're asking customers to pay annually, it's usually in thousands of dollars rather than hundreds. So for us, it was often we were hearing from our customers that they were needed a little bit more time to make the leap and to get approval often from their billing team to make that yearly commitment to our tool. 
So based on that feedback, we wanted to make sure that we offered our customers something that told them we were listening. And so here is Kieran again explaining a deal extension. Just hang on. I'm back. Kieran, Chief Discount Officer here at Unbounce. I've done it again. Just give me one second. You guys think you could keep it down out here? That'd be great. So, what I've done is I've fandangled you a little bit more time. You have until tomorrow evening to claim your deal. It's Friday, May 19th. Now, we've been getting feedback from other Unbounce customers who have already switched, and they're going nuts. They love it. I want the same for you. So, if we need a quick refresher on what plans on what you get with your new plan, here we go. We get unlimited users, unlimited domains, a lot more traffic, and access to all the new Unbounce features. This is all I could do. That's it. Claim your deal, the clock is a ticking. My favorite part of that whole video is Kieran just with his like wide-eyed stare, staring at his customers and daring them not to take him up on his deal. But in the end, the deal extension was really effective. So this is a, a chart outlining all of the migrations from monthly to annual that we saw throughout the campaign. As you can see, there's bumps um, throughout every single time we sent an email, which is natural. Every time you send a communication, often you'll see more interactions. But that's the extension right there. So part of the campaign, it's the second highest bump in in the migrations that we saw for the entire campaign. So it was so worthwhile for us to give our customers a little bit extra time. This is a very simple framework that I just walked you through. Reciprocity ultimately helps build trust with your customers so that they're more incited to take you up on your offer. So we're at the, mo the inevitable point in the presentation where we've built intimacy, we've wooed our customers, they trust us. Well, what's the next step? Obviously, it's to put a ring on it. I mean, when you think about relationships and you think about romantic comedies, that's often the next step. So we don't have a forever plan at Unbounce, but we do have the annual plan. So let's remind ourselves what our target was. Our target was to move customers, uh, to move the dial from 2% to 10% of customers on annual plans. And in the end, we ended up with 21% of customers on annual plans for a total of 700,000 in annual recurring revenue for Unbounce. But as customer marketers, we remember, the best part isn't the business value overall, it's the fact that we created value for our customers and we heard that they appreciated it. So we got tons of great feedback telling them how much they appreciated the level of detail that we put into this campaign to make them feel special and that they loved our marketing, they loved Kieran especially, and that overall what we've done makes sense. So thank you so much for having me today. If you have any questions, please hit me up or visit alexa.unbounce.com as well and check out all the talk takeaways. Thanks.